Welcome back, friends. We've got game two of three for the night coming up here in the I-League Open. This is our first match of Team Tinker facing off against Flipside NA. I didn't realize they had an NA division. The last Flipside we were covering was the Flipside RU in Star Ladder. That's the, the iteration that I'm familiar with, but uh, we'll see how they fare. Uh, we've got Team Flipside consisting of Jenkins, Shredder, Sunken, New Sham, and Shibby. So, um, not a lot of names that I recognize, but we'll see how they fare. We were a little late getting started with this particular lobby, so let's uh, just hop on into the draft here. Second. Team Tinker, as we've seen in recent days, have been looking pretty darn fierce. Reserve They've got time. a lot of individual skill, and Tinker's been banned out once Dyer again. So, we got to banned. see them play Tinker in their first game. They wrecked faces, and, turn to ban. well, now it's been banned. Every other game since in that first banning couplet. It was a first pick razor coming out from Oh Team Liquid. Ho ho ho. Oh man. Anybody else see that Reddit thread yesterday? They're basically confirmed to be the new Team Five Liquid. I don't know about you guys. I bet they're trolling. Or maybe it's true. I don't know. I haven't been on Reddit today. Uh, it's it's troll, time. guys. It's troll. They've said many a time that this team is just for this tournament. So you never know. Now, I have this sneaky suspicion that our, our Team Liquid here, a.k.a. Team Tinker, may be angling for a Meepo pick, whether it's a Steve Meepo or a Sing Meepo. The reason I say that partially is because of the Earth Shaker. He is considered one of the counters to Meepo. Of course, the more units they have, the more damage the Echo Slam does. So this could be one of those kind of deny picks slash they also like running Earth Shaker. Um, time will tell. The game we saw yesterday, Meepo and Tinker were the first two bans, and Meepo still has not been banned out here. Um, he could be the fourth ban coming from Flipside uh, up next, but time will tell. Obviously, Flipside looking for a much more aggressive pushing strategy here. Nature's, or Jesus, Nature's Prophet. DP and Troll, very good pushing heroes. Troll with that battle trance. Oh man, it's nasty. You can flash push those towers so ridiculously quick. And, um, okay, they ban out the Shadow Shaman, so Team Tinker. I keep seeing the Team Liquid, and it's throwing me off. I'm trying to call them Team Tinker. Um, a little wary of, of an all-in push strat, so they will try and hedge their bets a little bit here. They did ban out the Lycan, which is certainly a step in the right direction. The Alchemist ban is a, a little interesting here as well, but, oh, there's Daddy Pudge! Team, team Flipside. We might not know him, but they are ready to give us a show, and I can certainly appreciate that. There was a fourth ban Meepo coming out from Flipside, so pick. a smart ban, but also a little bit of a bummer. I'm always excited to see a, a high-skilled Meepo player, so Sky snakes. Can you imagine seeing a Pudge and a Meepo in the same game? Team Marana, Liquid third choice turned. for Team Liquid, and well, there you go. I was thinking perhaps Dyer a Bane Team or a Shadow Demon. Demon. Next words out of my mouth, and it's going to be the Bane this game. Pretty scary try lane with these three heroes right here. Earthshaker, Marana, Bane, super easy setup. Uh, with the fissure, you can move in for the nightmare, smack him with an arrow, click, 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 and that should pretty much be a kill. Ten seconds remaining. Now, Skywrath is the fourth choice for flip side, so uh, this is sort of a, an odd draft from our dire side. Uh, the opener, of course, very push intensive, Reserve and these next time. two heroes really don't bring much to the table in the way of pushing. Pudge and Skywrath, very gank oriented, moving around in that early to mid game, trying to secure kills here and there. Um, sort of an interesting addition to this draft, and maybe the final pick from Flipside will kind of bring it all together, and we'll um, see what their strategy is all about. But right now, they're lacking on the Disable. That's their biggest problem. It seems that Dismember is about the only stun they have. They've got some silences, they've got a slow, but they don't really have any lockdown, any hard Disable. And uh, Team Tinker, on the other hand, they, they've got a fair bit of it. They've got their Fissure, they've got the Sacred Arrow, and they've even got Brain Sap and uh, Fiend's Grip. Not Brain Sap, pardon me, Nightmare and uh, Fiend's Grip here. So they've got a, a pretty big disparity there. Bane will have his work cut out for him with the Double Silence, uh, as well as the Hook and the Dismember. Plenty of stuff to interrupt old Bane here, even Bashes from Troll. So he will certainly have a rough time, but positioning will be the name of the game. Final bands come out, it is the Invoker. From Flipside Tactics, special Tic Tacs. Yeah, could have worked well here. Remaining. Of course, uh, Team Tinker do have a couple of players there that can handle the Five Invoker, so certainly remaining. a smart choice. The Abaddon. Hmm. Abaddon does pair very nicely with Pudge. 
The Abaddon just roams around, throws aphotic shields on him. He can rot himself into oblivion and get that bit of burst damage from the shield exploding. So perhaps that's what they're thinking of here. Um, the Razor, I think, is the scariest part of what Team Tinker have been able to pick up here. And Tinker do have some okay anti-push. The Earthshaker in particular, really hard to push into. Axe. And wow. What a fun lineup from Flipside. They'll grab the axe. Someone's getting the axe tonight. How are they going to lane this? Gosh almighty. I have no idea. I'm, I, I don't even know how to go about analyzing this Flipside. Who, who is their position for? I guess it's axe. Is it a position 5 Skywrath with a jungling axe and then like a off lane troll, safe lane death prophet, Ten mid lane pudge? Remaining. So many different ways they can lane this. Such an odd draft. Five seconds Who knows? Remaining. Who knows? We'll just wait till we get in the game. And oh, it's a Viper. So they get a lane dominator here. A Viper, very good against Pudge. It's very difficult for Pudge to get those early denies. And Viper can just poo on Pudge in lane. It's pretty disgusting. Viper's one of those heroes that can kind of just stand and go man mode and... Pudge will kill himself faster than, than he'll be able to kill the Viper, especially in the, the higher levels. Like Once that level 6 point comes out, Viper has a pretty big edge in that matchup. So we'll see how uh, how they do it. Now, Team Tinker, it's a little bit hard to guess sometimes how they're going to set up their lanes because um, with, with sort of one of these all-star lineups, they, they've been rotating things around. The only one that's a pretty surefire thing is uh, the Excalibur. I think Steve will be in the position one Razor, probably in the safe lane. They'll build uh, seconds, somewhat of a of a support duo around him. Maybe they'll Five do... Seconds remaining. Hmm, hmm. They could do a 2-1-2. Two, two. Pycat does tend to roam around a lot, but they'll want him uh, near the Marana. And, oh, good, Jenkins is fine. So I'm not sure what the issue was, but that's good. We need pause. Oh, never mind. Oh, they need to pause. There we go. For battle. So interesting stuff. How are these dire lanes going to come about? This is one of the funkiest drafts I've seen in a while. And it appears it will be an off-lane axe. Okay, he gets pulled quite a bit. Or, well, he gets pulled some regen, buys a fair bit. And that'll be Sunken playing on the off-lane axe. Looks like he will be solo for now. Shibby will be headed solo mid on the Death Prophet. And that will put a safe lane tri-lane for flip side. Jenkins on the Pudge. We've got Nush Nusham, Nusham playing on the uh, Skywrath Mage here. And then that gives us Shredder on the quote-unquote support troll warlord. I'm not sure who's really playing which position here. Maybe Shredder is going to be the position one, and it's like a position four Pudge. Just roaming around and ganking people. I don't know. I don't know about the roaming kind of support-based Pudge. The biggest problem with that is he needs experience. Pudge really needs to hit level 6 and get that dismember. So I'm a little bit skeptical of this tri lane. Whether it's Pudge farming, whether it's Troll Warlord farming, Pudge is not a, a tri lane hero, generally speaking. You can do some cheesy tri lanes, like, like, like an Omni Knight or the Abaddon, as we talked about. There are some cheesy things you can do in a tri lane, but generally speaking, Pudge is one of those staple mid lane heroes that does well in a 1v1 matchup and really benefits from all that solo experience. Wow, they're actually using the Team Pennant. This this is pretty serious. Is this, is this actually Team Liquid? Should I actually refresh Reddit? And uh, is, is there news here that I am not privy to yet? Nope, doesn't look like it. I think they're just trolling, but I don't really know. I think they're just having some fun with it. But uh, I don't know. Confirm Team Liquid? I think they're just playing with it, guys. We'll see. I don't know. Rumors? Oh, God, rumors. Let's gossip. Let's gossip about the player swaps. Radiant side, let's introduce Team Liquid. We've got Stand-In Excalibur, old Steve down here playing on the position one Razor. He'll be joined by Bulma on the Earthshaker, headed down towards the bottom lane as well. Koikva, right now, solo mid on the Viper, and up top that leaves us with Pycat on the support Bane, and none other than Sing Sing with the Tails of the Moon Rider playing on the Marana here. So Sing Sing will be farming up a storm. The last game we saw with uh, Team Tinker, Sing Sing just wrecked the offlane. He played an offlane faceless void, and he literally won a 1v3. He had equal farm as the position one who had two supports with him, and all he had was Pycat rotating into his lane every so often. Yeah. Essentially a solo lane. So these two, they know what they're doing, and um, this is going to be a, a little difficult uh, for the dire side, I think, once this Bane makes himself known. 
Piecat, boots first. Still hasn't leveled anything yet. We'll be looking for the Nightmare most likely. Sing Sing getting some of those initial levels um, before they, they make it rain, as it were. Now, Jenkins on the Pudge. He's just jungling right now. He went for a Hill Troll. He's, he's literally just jungling. Oh, up top. Nightmare into Arrow. Shredder. They won't have enough for the kill quite yet. Or will they? No, Piecat gets a miss, unfortunately. What is Jenkins doing here? Has the clarity on. We'll go up to full HP or full mana, I guess. And is, is he going to hook the hill troll? And then just chop him down. This is a lot of effort for one very tiny creep, if that's what he's doing. Okay, hooks it down. Oh, okay, he's trying to pull into the mid lane. Okay, but he whiffed it. A noble effort. I like what he's trying to do. Oh, while we're looking at that, Shibby caught in the nightmare. Quickbo looking for the setup. Beautiful fissure from Bulba. That'll block out Shibby. Nowhere for him to go. Oh, wow, there's a little corner there. Okay, he makes it out, but it doesn't matter. First blood's drawn. Bulba the one to walk away with that bonus gold. And Liquid should be pretty happy with that initial gank. So now the DP is taking a spill. Old Jenkins here will move into the mid lane. I like what he was trying to do. That's pretty cheeky. Tried to pull there. We've seen Rubik's do stuff like that where you pull the creep on the other side of the cliff. We've seen dire teams do it as well where you pull them down on this side and they run all the way around and you can aggro the creeps, but that was that was unsuccessful. Up top, Nusham in some trouble. Fissure flies through once again. There should be an arrow. Starstorm doing a lot of damage. The second star comes out onto Shredder. Sing Sing actually takes some extra damage here. Will leap back to safety. Meanwhile, Nusham getting chased down. Piecat just needs one more auto attack. He'll find it. And now Shredder, nowhere to go. Might get denied by the neutrals. And oh, there it is. The Shockwave flies through, but not enough for the denial. And Marana will secure that kill. So it's a 2 for nil up top, but down bottom. Excalibur gets picked off. And it's just a solo kill to the Axe, Radiance I think. Axe only level 5. Not sure what happened down there. We were watching the skirmish up top, but Steve takes the tumble. And now Axe kind of pulling ahead in this lane. Isn't it Tail of the Moon Rider? Yeah, look at that. Tail of the Moon Rider. Get wrecked. The tail of the Moon Rider. Oh my god. You guys are distracting me. Stop it, Twitch chat. <laughs> Excalibur gets some vengeance here in the bottom lane as he picks off the axe. That's the name of the Marana hairdo, folks. I know she's not the Moon Rider. That's Luna. It's the cosmetic, y'all. Pump the brakes. You derps. Anyway, so this bottom lane. I, maybe we should be watching this bottom lane. There's action all over the place, but... Uh, it's been a one-for-one one trade. Both of them have picked up solo kills now. Level 5 Razor, level 5 uh, Axe. He will go for the Static Link, and Axe could be in some trouble here. No, this is an interesting matchup. RNG coming out. Steve needs to just lay in the auto attacks. It's going to be close. Sunken will fall. As Excalibur secures another kill. This is a really weird matchup where Axe kind of counters him. If he gets some lucky RNG when Steve's up in the creeps, but if he doesn't get the RNG, you just chop him down with Static Link. So I see how it can be that back and forth in the solo matchup. If any supports rotate down, though, if there's a stray Fissure flying through when he tries to man up on Razor like that, mm, yeah, it's not going to be so good. This is the, uh, the Razor build that seems to be popular now, skipping the Eye of the Storm at level 6. At least it's the build that uh, Excalibur has gone for in the few games we've seen him play Razor. Goes for that value point in the Plasma field. So he's now level 7 against the soon-to-be-6 Axe. And that does make things a little more difficult. Meanwhile, up top, Sing Sing connects with an arrow, leaps forward, and finds another freebie. You make a fine crater. Kills all over the place here, but it seems Team Liquid, Team Tinker, whatever you want to call them, finding victory in every lane. Mid going way in favor of Koikba. Look at the CS difference here. 33-13 and 13 versus the 12-3 and 3 Death Prophet. It's a bloody massacre. Now, to be fair, Viper, one of the one of the best laners, so uh, he should be winning pretty handily. And that initial gank onto the Death Prophet really spiral, uh, spiraled her in the wrong way. But this is so difficult. Viper is going to be so huge. He's already pretty big, and that gap is just going to grow. Now that Razor won the last fight against Axe, he's pretty far ahead as well, about 700 up on the net worth chart. And Sing Sing, well, he picked up a solo kill, and uh, he's had some help with the Bane, so he's doing just fine. 2 0 1 on himself. So, once again, Team Tinker basically winning every single lane out of the gate. 6 to 1 to get things started. They've got about a 3,000 gold lead, 3,000 experience lead. Uh, only six minutes in, so looking pretty solid here. Tranquil's up on Axe. Jenkins is now rotated bottom. 
this is the guy that I've, I've got my eyes on. He did get one successful pull here. Um, so he did pull one lane that he denied from the Viper, but this Pudge pick just seems to be a lot of a lot of wasted effort so far. Jenkins has done pretty much nothing. And I don't even know that it's his fault. He might be a really good Pudge player, but he hasn't really been in any opportunities to, to do much. I mean, he's tried to do this cheeky little pull camp, which has kind of backfired. And now he's just stuck as this underleveled roaming Pudge, who's basically like a position 5 Pudge. He's got Tranquil Boots and Wards. This is an odd strategy that just doesn't seem to be working out. So, Pycat and Bulba smoked up, looking for an opportunity. It is a 3v2 here in the top lane, and old Shredder could be in some trouble. Pycat pressing forward, looking for the Nightmare, but a nice silence from Nushim to get things started. Arrow connects onto Shredder, the Fissure flies through. And will they have the damage to secure a kill here? Doesn't look like it. The Star Storm comes in, but they just can't do it. Nice heads up play from the Skywrath there. Would have been a much different story had Pycat been able to get off that nightmare. Though it's not over yet. Coming for the wraparound. Jenkins on his way in. Level 2 hook now. Does have some decent range on it. Pycat connects with the nightmare. These neutrals are in the way, but Sing Sing throws the arrow, and now Jenkins in big trouble. Do they have the follow-up damage? Silence onto Sing. There's your fissure. Well played from Bulba. That'll block him out, but it's a suicide. And Jenkins will make the best out of a sticky situation. Unfortunately, gets that trip back to the well, but... Does deny the Radiant some extra undo gold. Still good rotations from Team Tinker, though. Oh, look at this greedy quick play. He's gone for a hand of Midas saying, hey, man, I'm farming so well in the mid lane. Why not? 52 from sight. to 28 on the Death Prophet. Koifa is just out of control. He's a full level ahead of the Death Prophet. Looks like they could pull a rotation here, though. Sunken is invisible. Scouting out Koifa. No wards down on either side right now. We're at that point in the game where the initial wards have despawned. And there was a window of opportunity for Flipside here when Koikva was hunting for the rune. But I think that window has pretty much expired here. He'll just rotate over, use that hand of Midas, and Sunken's going to go for it. Jenkins on his way in as well. He connected the hook. Moonlight Shadow. They have no detection. And Moonlight Shadow should be more than Radiant's enough for Koikva to survive. Yep, there you have it. Attack. I'm not sure if they would have had that kill regardless. There is a dunk available on Sunken, so very possibly, but rotations were coming in. Even without the Moonlight Shadow, that was a pretty risky play. Now, if Pudge was 6 and they had a Dismember, that would have been easy peasy. But level 3 Pudge, just not so scary against a level 8 Viper. That corrosive skin makes all the difference in the world. And now that he has Viper Strike available, good luck, Pudge. And all that poison makes it so hard for Pudge to actually land those suicides. Both sides will throw some wards down here at the top rune position. And Pycat will scout out uh, these ogres getting picked off here, looking just to leech some experience. Might be able to just grab a few CS of his own. Will connect with a Nightmare onto Nusham. Sing Sing with a long-range arrow. Will it fly through? No, it sure won't. But Pycat might be able to just grab a solo kill. Throws on the negative urn charge, and that'll be enough to tick him down. That's a free kill. Pycat versus the world. Now Sing Sing in some trouble. Will get silenced. Koikva joining the party. No leap available. Sing does have a few wand charges, but won't even burn him. Now Pycat trying to make the great escape here. He's on the run. Just brown boots, but can they catch him? Sunken has the tranquils. Broken by Pycat. Nicely played. And now he's on the run. Battle Hunger will slow him down, but now not enough mana for the Berserker's Daya's call. I think Pycat will make it home free. Bulba will tank the tower, throws out a Fissure. TP coming in. It is Shibby. Can he find some kills here? Another TP coming in. No, Excalibur turns it around. He finds a kill on the Death Prophet. Now Excalibur maybe overcommitting. Hook does connect. Rot slowing him down. Has a couple of wand charges, but Excalibur will fall. One for one trade down here in the bottom lane, but Pycat does survive at the end of the day. Nine to three after the skirmish ends. And Team Liquid do come out ahead. Bulba, uh-oh, he's in some trouble. Jenkins connects with a hook, but the Fissure might set up a kill onto Sunken. A few more auto attacks will bring him down. Negative Urn to secure the kill. Pycat gets that one. Arrow flies through, connects onto Nusham. Right clicks will bring him down. It's a double kill for Pycat. And Team Tinker clean it up once again. Viper getting involved in these fights with the Hand of Midas. Power treads Midas and one assist. That's all you need. But Koikpa farming away. Farming away. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Well, could be the first tier one tower kill of the game here. As Dyer's Team Liquid, Team Tinker attack. group up, and yep, bottom tier one tower will fall. No defense mounted Dyer's by Flipside NA. 
Let's take a look at uh, the old item chart here, and Nushim has no items. Oh, my Lanta. How unfortunate. This Skywrath is so broke. Nothing but consumables. He can't afford anything. This poor guy Daniel's doesn't even have boots. Axe, 1,200 gold on him. Radiance no doubt working towards a blink dagger, attack. but still pretty far off the mark. What's Jenkins doing here? Sitting on just Tranquils as well. Has managed to pick up a bottle and almost level 6. So looking at uh, the levels, well, Pudge has done pretty well. I guess if you want to compare the position 4s, Pycat is 2 levels up on him, but given how slow of a start this Pudge had with that pulling trickery that we saw, he's recovered okay. Better than I thought he would have. Shredder up top, almost level 9. He's had a lot of time to farm. Did just go for a Vlad's Offering straight away. Jenkins picks up an Invisibility Rune here at the 12-minute mark. Just scouting about. Again, no Dismember, so doesn't have much potential for a solo kill here. But glancing at the Gold Graph, about 5,000 XP and Gold in the favor of the Radiant. Jenkins getting some pretty decent intel here. We can take a look at the Dire side and check their vision, but oh, hold that thought as Shibby gets initiated upon another nice Fissure. Excalibur getting a lot of extra damage, and he'll just chop him down with the lightning. 12 to 4 as Steve gets another one up on the scoreboard. Jenkins in kind of an awkward position here. He walks by the tower. They ping it out, so they know he's here. Meanwhile, they dive the Skywrath Mage, but this invisibility rune's about to expire. He needs to be careful here. Pycat TPing out. He'll find some vision, but oh, how unfortunate. Instead, they will just secure this tower kill. No detection available for Liquid. That would have been an easy kill on the Pudge. They will defend uh, the top tier 1 tower push. That's where PyCat was TPing to. Tower alive, just barely out of deny range. And they will secure the mid tier 1. So, 2 to nil in total tower count. Arrow flies from Sing Sing. Almost connects Shredder, but he will sidestep it. Now, they have Sunken in their sights. Shredder will TP out, and they'll leave Axe all by his lonesome. Lane Ward comes down. Fiend's grip, and more than enough damage to secure the kill on the Axe. Even a Moonlight Shatter deployed for good measure. And it looks like Team Tinker will secure Dyer's their third tower kill of the game here. Glyph comes out on the Dire side, but it will fall without a moment's notice. Radiance now, flip side will go for a tower attack. exchange. Glyph available on the Radiant side as they do pop the Exorcism. Dyer's I think Team Tinker could pop the Glyph attack. and TP in to make a defense if they were so interested. The question is, is that what they want to do? And it appears so. They don't even have to burn the Glyph for it. Exorcism. Only level one, three points in the Witchcraft, so should be a little under-leveled here, unfortunately. And that will make for uh, an easy push to defend. Sing Sing defends the bottom push from Shredder. And it is just a free tower for Team Tinker. Pycat throwing down a nice Observer there. These Observers look weird because they're blue. They look like Sentries at first, and then you realize they're not. It's kind of funky. So why is he throwing down just a casual Sentry? Ah, oh, it's an Observer. So look at this aggressive Ward Vision from the Radiant side. Though. They've got a Lane Ward here. Up on the high ground, and they've got a lane ward here in the mid lane. Team Tinker want to be aggressive, and they know it. Sunken, caught inside of a nightmare. Fissure to block him out. Bulba with the stun. Should be an easy kill here for the Axe. He will get off a Berserker's Call, but doesn't matter. Bulba falls in the end. Plenty of burst damage from Nushim and Shibby, but they will just turn around and drop the hammer. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Marana does get picked off by the Pudge and Troll combo. Ooh, up top, Shibby tries to TP home, and he'll be successful. So it's a two for two across the map. Actually, a pretty good exchange for Flipside NA. What's Steve working on? Goes for the mech first, as we've seen quite a bit. We'll probably work towards the Aghanim Scepter. And then straight into uh, the Refresher. Yeah, that's an Ogre Club coming out. And the Naked Greevil making a showing here once again. Top tier tower. Top tier 2 tower will most likely take a tumble. Doesn't look like Flipside are interested in mounting much of a defense. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Jenkins connects with a hook onto Pycat. Takes a lot of damage in return, though. Negative urn charge. He's looking for a suicide, but no. Bane gets the kill. The urn's enough to secure it. Now Shredder. Caught inside of the Nightmare. Echo Slam and Sing Sing coming in. No way he'll survive that one. It's a two for nil down in the bottom lane. And space created for that tier 2 in the top. It was an even trade just moments before. But now, Team Liquid, Team Tinker. 12,000 gold, 10,000 experience ahead. And that will secure a Blink Dagger for Bulba here at the 15-minute mark. Very good timing for him. Arcane Boots, Blink Dagger for 15 minutes. That's a pretty rich Earth Shaker. And as you can see by the net worth chart, yeah, large disparity. Viper more than doubling his mid-counterpart, who is the Death Prophet. Shibby opting for the Arcane Boots. We see a hook onto Sing Sing once again. Dismember, silence, Sing Sing in trouble. He will fall in exchange for half damage on this bottom Tier 2 tower. Flipside NA, they want aggression. An aggression they will have. No Blink Dagger up on the Axe quite yet. Only 1,600 gold on him. But we could see a fight break out. Nightmare onto Sunken. Nushim takes a Viper Strike. 
And Ra Razor comes around the backside. We'll see Sunken fall down here. Let's see what Steve's up to on the other side of the fight. And not much. Eye of the Storm just clearing up creeps. And it will be a one for two. Razor's big enough at this point with his point booster, Ogre Club, and mech depth. He can literally just solo people. That fight was kind of a four plus one where four of uh, Team Tinker were going this way. And Steve just did the wraparound coming here <laughs> and kind of did the old sandwich. Egg Scepters are now coming out, though. Viper has his complete, so Quickba will have the very short cooldown Viper Strike. And Excalibur not too far off the money, about 500 gold or so. This tower kill might be enough for it. Jenkins in the mid lane. He will get off the deny, but Shredder won't be so lucky. Caught inside the Fiend's Grip, and that'll be enough for the kill. Unstoppable streak now for the Bane Elemental. Bottom tier 2 tower falls, and looks like Liquid may just rotate in towards the mid and try and finish off the last outer tower. Right now it is 5 to nil in total tower count, soon to be 6 to nil. And Team Tinker just with so much momentum right now. Again, glancing at the item progression, what a disparity. The only items that have been completed are, well, we'll hold that thought, is more action coming out. Sunken, he just gets destroyed. Pie Cat was set up onto Shibby. Fisher flies through. Hook onto Excalibur, but he's not the target you want. He's too darn tanky. The Mystic Flare will be off the mark. Eye of the Storm enough to just chop down the Skywrath Mage. Jenkins getting dove pretty hard right here. Pie Cat looking for a Nightmare setup perhaps. Has it in a few seconds. We'll throw it onto Sunken. Jenkins trying to kite around the Tier 4s. Does manage to hook Excalibur. Excalibur could fall to the Towers. Nope, he looks okay. Meanwhile in the base. Oh, Bane. Bit off more than he could chew. But we'll call it Space Creation. Tier 2 Tower in the mid does fall. Troll Warlord and Pudge both end 6 streaks though. Razor does end up falling to the Towers. 950 gold goes to Pudge. 800 ends up going the way of the troll. So we see a little dent in the gold graph there. Yep, those are those two sprees being ended. Yeah, just that little little nugget there, a little plateau, but still an uh, extreme lead here. Basically insurmountable for this stage of the game. 15,000 gold, 18 minutes in. Pretty trouble to come back from. Viper with another 2,000 gold. Flipside may get a tower kill here. Glyph comes out as Shredder tries to bring it down. He has now Assange, but oh, in comes Bulba with the dunk. Shredder to fall. Down goes Nushim. Gets off the Mystic Flare. Might be able to grab a kill on Bulba. Just not enough damage. And it's a two for nil here in the mid lane. And the tier one tower stays standing outside of deny range. Costs them only a Glyph and an Echo Slam, but they do it. Jenkins caught by the double damage Koikva. Easy kill on Pudge. Just too much damage. He couldn't take the heat. He tried to get out of the kitchen. But Koikva, he boarded up the exit and locked him in. Three for nil across the map. Now 29 to 9. Pie Cat looking for more solo kills here. He's got himself a Blink Dagger. Ten charges on that urn. He finds Sunken. Still no Blink Dagger on this axe. What a sad story. Fiend's Grip. Arrow doesn't even need the Fiend's Grip. The long range arrow smacks him in the face. See you later, axe. Oh, boy. It's a disaster. There's just no item progression on the dire side. You gotta win a lane. That seems to be the biggest problem against all the teams that have faced off against Tinker. Is they have these great individual skilled players that are hard to lane against. And then you have Pycat, who just roams around and ganks. And once Pycat ganks your lane, that's it. Once Koikva or Excalibur or Sing Sing get a little edge, that's it. It's all over. And that's been their bread and butter this far. It happened again this game. Arrow flies through. Does connect onto Jenkins. That's a five-second stun. Will they follow up and go for the kill? Yeah, they sure will. Fissure, blink forward. Quick foot coming in. Mystic Flare comes in, but just tickles. Excalibur picks him back up with the mech. Jenkins will fall to start off this fight. Excalibur diving deep. Moonlight Shadow is deployed. But he will just back off. Doesn't want to hit the Tier 4s. Instead, they'll just focus on the Tier 3. There is an Agnim Scepter up on the Razor. So they will start chipping away at this tower. Glyph comes out, the creep wave gets cleared up, and this should be a pretty easy lane of racks here, especially without the Pudge. Arrow flies through, will be off the mark, blink forward from Koikva. Viper Strike on the Axe does help repel him as this Tier 3 tower does fall. Here we go, Bulba hopping forward, no dunk available, but they don't need it. Shredder gets obliterated, Shibby already at half health before he pops the ultimate. Has completed his Yules, that will keep him alive for now, but the poison bringing him down as the arrow hits him in the face. Viper Strike out on the Nushim, Pycat secures that one with the Brain Sap. Now Boba gets another kill up on the board as he finishes off the DP with a fissure. Also a zoning effect there as the melee racks do take a tumble. 
And Team Tinker looking like they will be able to secure another quick win here in the round of 32. Mid lane of Rax now completely fallen. Arrow flies through, just a zoning arrow. You know, casual scouting. They rotate straight away to the top lane, and Team Tinker living up to their reputation. Team of this caliber rocking the X caliber. Just taking out the towers. Uh oh. Uh oh, Pudge. You're in some trouble. That's a nightmare. He's having some bad dreams. Freddy Krueger's coming to get you. In comes Team Excalibur. I mean, Team Tinker. They finish off Skywrath Mage. Uh oh, Sing Sing. He gets hooked almost into the well. They secure a kill onto Sing. The instant buyback. GG. That's all they wanted. A kill on the Sing Sing as their whole team gets wiped up. 22 minutes of gameplay. Team Tinker, what could possibly be the new Team Liquid? Or just the most epic of trolls? Move on to the round of 16, where we may get to see them once again here in Game 3 coming up. Well, another pretty one-sided game here. Excalibur, 14, 3, and 5. And Koikba with an absolutely perfect game. 5, 0, and 11 up on him. 136 CS. Pretty impressive given that they spent so much time roaming about and picking off towers. But that will do it for Flipside NA for their run here in the open bracket of the iLeague EU North America qualifiers. All best of ones through the online portion. And we are now moving into the round of 16. And I believe we are just going to be following Team Tinker. Uh, if I'm not completely mistaken, and you do need to glance at the schedule here, um, but I think Team Tinker's round is being played next. So we will have a quick break here, guys. Then one more match coming up for our coverage today. Of course, I'm Zyori. If you're enjoying the solo casting, be sure to follow me on social media, on Facebook and Twitter, at Zyori TV. And be sure to follow Beyond the Summit as well, at Beyond the Summit, on both Facebook and Twitter also. David Parker feeling a bit under the weather still, so I'm solo at the helms. Everyone else is on vacay, but got to do what you got to do, guys. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back after this for one more game of iLeague.